Okay, folks, happy Friday. Here we are, end of the damn week. One more work day until Historicon. That would be Monday. So, I mean, if we go. <laughs> I have to keep saying that. I'm expecting something to like just drop at the last minute. But, anyhow. I don't care really that much either way. The whole goal is to get things painted. And if going to a convention means I'm more motivated to get something painted, then I'll be it. Okay, so where do we leave off? Um, okay, well, we've got, we're painting the command element, the cav command element. It's awfully. Uh, does it look kind of um, hazy? Let's see. Okay. So, we got a cavalry unit there. We got another cavalry unit here. I'm not 100% convinced on the shields. So, we'll just have to see how it plays out. And if anything, I'll repaint the shields. I wanted to do that thing because this is this guy's the banner, the banner guy, and um, and here's the commander that we have to do. So these two guys are done, except the ceiling. Same thing as these other guys that I did about a week ago. These three guys are completely done. I haven't sealed them yet. We need to go to assembly line, and and same with these guys that are sealed. I didn't put the I put the basic material on, but didn't paint it. So. We're going to get everybody to the point where these guys are, and then we'll finish them all off, including the command post. So you're not going to see any more elements finished until they're all done, because uh, it's really inefficient to do it that way. Um, and we've got basically limited time. So, um, yeah, so the flag. So the flag, I did it the other day on my paint program. And we printed them out the other day. And this is just a graphic that I found on the internet. And I, I shaded it and printed it. And it's honestly, it's probably going to be the middle one. Although I, I may have to reduce the size of the tails. The tails are just ridiculously long. And that's going to be a massive pain in the ass, but we'll see. Uh, we'll cut it square, glue it, and then after it's glued, we'll, we'll cut those pieces out. So, yeah. So this will this will go on this fellow right here. On the command stand. On the cavalry command stand. Because remember, we also have a command post. And the command post has uh, a flag that is made of white metal but it's going to be a more simpler flag not that i couldn't have just painted that other one too but anyhow that's next that's those that's those last seven so we got to get rolling I'm, I'm i'm thinking i'm pretty positive about being able to finish these i've got tonight basically all day tomorrow and all day saturday to get eight figures done and based i don't think it's going to be an issue uh, i don't foresee that being an issue And then we'll have a DBA army done. And when I get back from Historicon, I've got four elements to paint. Uh, a blade stand, a spear, and two bows. And then I'll have two more armies done. That'll be the Comnenum A and the B list will be done. So I don't know if we're going to do that or we're going to jump right into something else. Um, but anyhow, so this fellow right here, we kind of made some determinations the other night what... Um, what color we were, what we were going to do with his shield. And I think we're going to go ahead and do that now because it's kind of a big determinant in how everything else is going to turn out. So, um, let's leave this like this. Let's pull this out and see if we've got any smell yet. Ah, oh, shit. Let's hold this down and extend this up. 
This arm is a lot bigger than it needs to be, honestly. But you gotta buy all these things sight unseen, you know. The days of buying stuff in stores like that are, are gone. Regardless of us of the cost savings. No, nope, nothing there. And we got some pennies down here in the bottom. Still nothing. All right, we're going to peel this back. And we're going to go ahead and put more water on here. Of course, I got to put my glasses on or I'll never find the bathroom, even though it's right over there. Right back. If I had a lack of things to do, I'd probably do a comparison of how I like this paint palette compared to the other one, but um, I'm not sure that many people watch those things anyways. But in a nutshell, I think I like it better. Um, I'm kind of over the paper being weird, although it still is weird. It seems to hold moisture a lot better. It doesn't curl up as much. It has more space. It's not fall down. So overall, I like it better. I just wish didn't fill up the gap so much. Right now it's it's like as big as it could possibly be inside here. So lost lost my one lurker. I don't know, maybe Kevin's still out there without being notified. Hmm. People are come on or they won't. And then of course we'll be back on in the morning. And we'll be back on Sunday morning. You guys got to tune in the next couple days. We're going to see some awesome stuff coming out. Awesome things. All right. So we got a general here. Uh, the emperor is actually going to have a light blue cape. So I don't think I want to put a light blue cape on this guy. But let's go ahead and do his shield motif that I talked about doing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty determined what it's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. His armor is done. I did that this morning. And uh, we didn't paint the horse. The horse will be a white horse. Um, just this time. I don't always put a general on a white horse. And There they are. Everybody woke up. Uh, Stellar Conquest. Welcome back. Mr. Heller. Welcome. And Nordic's here, of course. He hasn't, he hasn't left. Okay, yeah, you guys need to tune in the next couple days. We're gonna we're gonna finish this army and it's gonna look grand. Um, for you guys who just joined, let me show you the flags that I did. All I do with the flags is because Pete's Pete's flags doesn't do everything, and his flags are are stellar. So uh, I've never met the guy, but um, anything he does is basically golden. So I just take something off the internet. Um, in this case, I think it was off of Wikipedia, and just add colors to it in my paint program. I basically do digitally the same as I do uh, by hand, and uh, and then just print it out. And it saves me a lot of time. It's a lot quicker. And if I screw it up, I can just print up another one. But anyhow. It, I'm actually probably going to do the small, the middle one or the smaller one. It, these these tails are just out of control big. I may actually have to cut them off, some of them. Um, but that was the dimensions that... This was a drawing somebody did on there. It was just in, in three colors. It was just blue, red, and white. No shading or nothing. So um, I did that the other morning. I think Thursday morning. So it took about maybe 30 minutes to do. It wasn't too bad. Lies and slander. Okay. 
that names for a new rule set lies and slander. No, I don't know any attorneys. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go ahead and do the white horse. The white horse. So paint palette, my impressions after two weeks of using this one, I like it better than the other one. Um, the paper is still weird, but it holds the moisture longer. It doesn't curl up after four or five hours. Um, and the seal is just incredible. And I don't have any mold smell. So I don't know whether it's because the sponge is new or there's some new technology or the, those pennies or I'm getting my money's worth out of the four pennies that are underneath there. I don't know. All of the above. So, so far so good. Bad thing is, is I just bought papers for this other one. So, but yeah, it is what it is. I do leave, but I come back. All right, um, we have enough black here to make something happen? We do, okay, perfect. We don't need to go any darker than that, I don't think. So because this army actually has two commanders, it has a commander that can be in a cavalry, it can, it can be, have a commander that can be in a command post. The command post will be the emperor. This will not be the emperor. This will be some guy. Uh, with a few exceptions, most of the time the Byzantine emperors didn't go into battle. They sent somebody else in with mixed results. Um, but I'm going to make the Byzantine emperor have a light blue cloak. Um, so this guy will not have a light blue cloak. I don't know why, but I've seen lots of illustrations with the Byzantine Emperor with a light blue cloak. That's what I'm gonna go with. So, for him. We may do some form of purple or something or another with this guy, I have no idea, but. The Byzantine Emperor will also have red boots. This guy will not. Not that there's much of these boots showing because they've got like the little metal strips armored on his uh, on his lower legs which always looks really archaic to me but I've seen the illustrations okay and we got a little bit of the ears Das ears. So we have this evening, pretty much all day tomorrow, all day Saturday, to finish this figure and seven more. And the seven guys are all foot. Six of the guys are foot. There's one mounted emperor, and um, and four of them are Varangian guard. And I'm going to paint them all at once. And that's probably the first four I'm going to paint. And I suspect they will be painted in the morning. That's going to be what I start off with. So. It's good to have plans. Sometimes you can't stick to them, but. That's the, that's the idea of what we're going to try to accomplish. And we're not going to finish any of these stands completely. In other words, I'm not going to stop and seal them or do the base material. We'll wait until all that's done because that just consumes time. And, um, you know, we just got these few days until until the show. So, uh, Wolfman, welcome. Uh, do I know of any good reference books on the Bronze Age? Nope. That's the whole reason I don't like the Bronze Age. There's not any good reference books. You have been working on Carthaginian elephants uh, with or without uh, towers. Not in the painting mood. Huh? Don't paint. I honestly don't feel like painting either, but. It's 
got to be done if I want to get excited about painting the next thing. So. There would have been an opportunity to possibly film a game tonight, but I opted out. I need to get this done. Filming in game is just going to create more work for me. And none of it is stuff that I have to do for the show, so. I still got the awards to put together. Little things. The good news is I'm all alone this weekend. So I can talk to myself to keep myself on track. And that helps tremendously. So you don't forget something. All right, that coating's done. Let's add more white. Two with towers, two without. Okay. If I had to do Carthaginian elephants, um, I'd probably do half of them with, half of them without. Because if you're talking about something like Zama, they don't have any towers there. I think I don't think. I think they were just kind of rushed together and. I like the idea of Zama with no towers and the other stuff with it. And then, you know, first Punic War is less likely to have towers than the second one, you know. It's good to mix and match. So I'm trying to figure out what the difference is physically and what the clothes that they wore between Mongols and Huns. And I'm not thinking there's a whole lot of difference. And mainly, like, foot. I need to build some foot elements. You know, obviously, mounted, some of the Mongols have partial armor or barding or something like that. And, and the Huns basically don't have any barding. Um, you know, and there's a couple of mongol-like things but i don't think they look that different from each other and the reason is is i'm probably going to have to use some mongol figures for some of the uh, hun foot figures so but again that's what i suspect i will do next which does not necessarily mean that's what i'm going to do next uh, once I start on it, I can't change my mind or I really mess things up. I'm mean, I planning to do Attila. I'm planning to do every version of Hun from Attila to the Saber to the Hephthalites. The White Huns. Yep. With the Hephalump. With a lot of, with some foot guys on it. I think one of the descriptions that had 10 halberd ears. Well, I'm not putting 10 halberd ears on there. Okay. That was that. And that was basically off the description of some Chinese traveler, you know, that said that some guy went and was traveling to, over there and said, Oh yeah. Oh, they got the elephant and it's got lots of halberd ears. How many? Oh, about 10. You know, I'll put a couple of them on foot. But you know, there's basically other than, the gladiator Huns, there's nobody that makes Hun foot guys. Basically no one. So, um, you know, the elephant's going to have a tower. And, um, and I'm going to put some bow guys in the tower. But I'm like, where do I get the bow guys from? I don't really want to use the gladiator foot because I need them. I have, I think, exactly enough to. For I think it's the saber or whatever that have a couple of bow stands. But, and the plan to do them is we're going to be doing some historical battles with them. You know, which not much is known about them, so we're going to have to wing a lot of stuff. But they'll be fun. And they play into Mitch's new army that he's going to pick up. And I also heard rumors that he's picking up more than just one army. But we'll see. The other ones are... are um, 
ones that he already has or has similar stuff of. So it's the um, it's the Han Chinese that are exciting. So, Mr. Wadi. For my Huns, I did a bunch of different nomads with a few Mongolian-type figures thrown around a few bases. From what I read, it was a meritocracy, and almost anyone could raise through the ranks. Knowing how the math works when ordering 10 chicken wings from the local takeaway. <laughs> I think the Hun... I think that the whole point in doing the Huns... Well... The reason I'm doing it is because they're they're an enemy of, of Mitch's new army, and he's going to be excited to do that. But it's you know we're gonna if I wasn't going to do historical battles, it was just to do them for wimp wars or whatever. Yeah, you know, not that exciting. But um, I don't know what the hell I was saying. What uh, is this? But the, the challenge is going to be, honestly, when you look at the Huns, they just look boring. You know, a bunch of guys wearing, you know, non-exciting clothes with non-exciting hats and stuff like that. But um, they will look cool. When I do them, they will look cool. Another army I want to do, I want to do Franks. I want to do early Franks. The guys with the stupid striped shirts, because they look stupid. So there's my end. I, I want to make stupid guys look cool. You know, I'm not going to, you know, put them, give them things that is uh, not appropriate to them, but, you know, take what we know and, and make them look interesting. So, yeah, we didn't play today. Today we were going to do the, um, the Jenga thing. I think we're going to wait on that. I think we're going to wait on the Jenga thing because I was thinking about the Jenga thing and there's a problem I can already see with it. What happens when you have an army that has a lot of Saloy and it is fighting, um, say, uh, a spear army? So the spear can't hurt the Saloy, but the spear make the Saloy recoil a bunch of times. They're still pulling blocks, right? So they could actually break from that. And uh, maybe I didn't read far enough into it, but um, either way, I did not want to film and create more work for myself because I got plenty to do this weekend. And it doesn't necessarily include that. So that can wait. Also, it is hot as balls out there. It was 96 degrees. I, don't, I really don't want to go get home from work and go into a freaking hot box. So. But the camera didn't work the other day. It started working. I got 11 minutes in and it shut off. So um, I don't know if the person that was playing was waving their hands a lot. And it closed down, but it, it started off with four people there and quickly turned into six. So it would have been a zoo anyways. All right, that's about done. So let's go to, um, let's go to the shield. All right. And we're having a black background shield. We're gonna do a yellow cross with white trim around the shield. So let's go ahead and grab are yellow. <laughs> Got a trip coming up. Also crazy busy. Yeah, I'm actually not excited about the convention yet. I have a hard time looking forward to things. In general, maybe it's 28, 20, almost 29 years of this job that kind of turns me cynical. And also all the COVID crap where they change the rules and shit at the last minute. So, you know, I kind of reserve until we're there. And we'll have a good time if, if everything plays out as we expect it to. But I, I don't like getting excited about things too early because... Um, You end up fooling yourself and okay, I think this looks like it's really big but I think we're gonna use this one I think we're gonna I think we can still use this one I don't think we need to go into all right yeah 
I changed my mind. The thing is, is I don't. I had a really small brush around here. I think in my haste of cleaning it up, is I don't think it's this one because this one's already going sideways. Then went. Well, I'm gonna buy one of those Windsor and Newton brushes, and if they're not the cat's meow, you're not gonna hear me. I'm gonna bring that up every damn time, just al along with the fact that you know Hannibal's a better commander than Alexander. Oh, we had a visitor the other, uh, the, other, the other day, even though the filming didn't work, an experienced player, and he agreed. He, he thought Hannibal was a better commander. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not building a Carthaginian army, so. I've got no interest. You know what I should do? I should build a Numidian army and run them into the damn ground. Like, make them lose every game. <laughs> oh. I think I figured it out the other day. Is I've played the Numidians 22 times and I've only beaten them four times. Or something like that. And it's not that they're so powerful. It just seems like whenever I'm fighting them, I roll like shit. Oh, damn Qaddafi-looking bastards. Keep reading your name as Nordic Weasel. You've been painting for 14 years, never once bought an expensive paintbrush. I hadn't either, but I'm tired of hearing about it. The only reason I haven't tried one is because, you know, you may not have bought expensive paintbrushes, okay? But... You know, you go and you check out the pack. Like, okay, that one looks like it's kind of shitty and quality control. And about the, all right, let me look at the other pack. You know, and you pick a pack that kind of works. You know, um, what about Seleucids under Hannibal's command? I don't know that he actually did that. Um, I don't know that he was actually commander. I think it was under the weather or whatever. I know what you're talking about. I have a Seleucid army to do, but frickin' Mitch has, went and had a Seleucid army. I got nothing against him. Um, I will build a successor, successor army. I don't mean just Pyrrhus, and Pyrrhus is... One of these days will get, we'll get done, I guess. So I want to get these guys done, so at least I, I've got about 30 hours in a car to, to think about how I'm going to go about it. All right, let's put a little crossbar down here. Let's put a little crossbar here. Let's put a little crossbar here. Put a little crossbar here. All right, and now the face of this is going to be black. We don't need to add anything. I'm going to put a dot in the center area of each one. And we're going to we're going to bring that up some. Okay? We are going to grab a, a smaller brush for that. We're going to have to break one of these. These are actually the most expensive brushes I ever bought. And they're maybe a couple bucks each. Like two. And they're not made in China, supposedly. And it was difficult as shit to find them.
I'm just I'm not buying Chinese brushes anymore. Uh, I may go back to buying these. I may go back and buy these cheap ones, but um, I want to try the Windsor and Newton thing out just to. But I want to see it in person because if it doesn't look like it's a good a good brush thing, like if it looks like all nappy looking and stuff, I'm not buying it. I mean, they're twenty freaking dollars. I mean, that's a lot of freaking money. Because these Chinese brushes, hell, I used to, I used to buy ten of them for four dollars. It's almost like too too cheap. Like, man, what what are these made out of? You know, as long as you're not using those testers brushes, brushes we as kids, all the other ones are just fine. Bronze Age covers that. Seldom see people playing this stuff. Yeah, I I just hate that we just don't have any history about it. You know. Watch a documentary about sea people. Seems like they talk more about Egypt than it's bronze making. Yeah, because you don't know shit about them. You know? Mr. Hamilton, welcome. Watching one of the chariots of Mycenaean seem to not have used any kind of reliable answer how to get used chariots. Yeah, there's just too many what ifs. Too many what ifs. And there's not that many. Well, there's a few. But it's not like, oh man, these fig so and so just came out with these figures and they're awesome. There's not a whole lot of that. Uh, there's some, but there's not a whole lot of that. Like I'll never build a new kingdom Egyptian army. Everybody, everybody. I mean, I know like freaking four people that I know have them. Nothing against them. They look cool, but like overdone. Overdone. Had more white in there. Add more white. Hold on a second. second.
It's a lot of conflicts that people don't do, but they don't make figures for them, and a lot of people aren't interested in them. Like, I was looking at figures of War of Jenkins' Ear, right? There's a battlefield that I went to here, not too far away from here, you know, also known as the War of Austrian Succession. Nobody plays that. Nobody plays that game, that, that period. You know, and nobody makes a dedicated range of figures. It's bad enough to get, you know, Lace War stuff. Lace War stuff's pretty unpopular. You know, Marlboro. But again, you know, it boils down to... Is it something that you're interested in? I'm like, you know, do I do I like how the figures are dressed? Like, I, that's one thing I don't care about. Uh, I'm painting my last figure for the command stand, but I still have the command post to do. It's a lecture I liked on YouTube called 1177, The Year Civilization Collapsed. There's a book on that, I think. Don't remember him talking too much about Egypt. The library in Alexandria had not been destroyed. We all would have more info on civil, sea peoples and comparable civilizations. Right, which is why I hate people who destroy libraries. Which is why the Mongols are on my shit list. <laughs> yep. We know so little and they go and destroy, you know. Damn mongoloids. Okay. Oh, I was going to possibly put something around the shield. Well, I didn't do it now. I don't think it needs it. This guy's going to be busy enough as it is. And we still need to bring the yellow up a little bit, so. Sometimes less is more. I've listened to a couple of lectures on the great courses and I like them, especially that um, the Kenneth Harl guy that did the, the 26 or 27 part Alexander one. I thought it was really interesting, except the one episode he did on the coinage. I thought that was pretty boring, but I listened to that about a year ago and I thought it was pretty cool. But from what I've read about the successors and stuff recently, I think I've done four books on them recently. Um, maybe I'm counting the one I'm reading now as the fourth one. Anyhow, uh, I'm pretty convinced, well, we'll probably never know. I'm pretty convinced that Cassander poisoned him. So the story I'm gonna go with is uh, Alexander wanted to turn, um, I love the uneducated people. says the eastern Mediterranean became deserted after 1200. Yeah, that was uh, Thera, right? The Thera eruption? The theory? But anyways, I'm pretty convinced that uh, Antipater and uh, 
sent Cassandra over there to freaking poison him because um, because he was trying to get all uh, Eastern on him. Um, I, I, I listened to his Step Nomad one. Um, he's, he has a lot of energy. The problem, the only problem that I think that he has uh, is that he does... Um, uh, um, and, and if you don't notice it, it's okay. But as soon as you notice it one time, it's like way over the top. But he's, he's good. He's not a boring lecturer. He definitely has a lot of energy. And uh, like I said, the Alexander one wasn't boring at all. The step one wasn't bad either. I think I've done three or four of his. Um, he has a lot of energy, so he keeps you awake. Um, as opposed to some other people that, you know, just make you like wonder, why did I even get this course? Um, but yeah, I've, I've listened to the Step Nomad one. The problem is, is a lot of it is just like conjecture and don't even, cause I don't even know if conjecture is, I shouldn't use words, I don't know what they mean. <laughs> You, a lot of it is just guesswork, you know, and not a lot is known, so. <clears throat> Which I guess is okay, because when you're painting the stuff, you can kind of put your own spin on things, you know. But I'm probably going to get some, uh, I'm going to have to use some Mongol foot for the bows, for the Huns. And mainly, you know, the bow guys that are going to be in the tower and the elephant of the of the Hephthalites. Or as I'll call them, the White Huns. Which I didn't know that they made Persia, Sassanid Persia, their bitch for about a hundred years. I did not know that. That's how that's how bad they uh, the Persians got off on that one. Hey, that's the whole point of wargaming, historical wargaming for me, is learning about shit you didn't know. But I plan on doing, you know, if I'm going to do it, you know, almost all the armies have at least eight light horse. So you paint eight light, eight light horse that you could use for Attila, you could use them for the White Huns, you can use them for the Saber, or the, uh, I think there's one other one. Um, you know, mix them up for different things. All right, I'm I am avoiding the color of the cape, like the plague. I'm not. I'm gonna try. I'm not gonna do light blue. I'm saving that for the emperor, and uh, and I'm not gonna do purple either, probably. And red's just too boring. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna plug along with everything else. Uh, about time for my first soda. I think so. Uh... Am I doing Huns or Shang Nu? Yes, I'm gonna. I'm not doing Southern Shang Nu. He actually has Southern Shang Nu. They're the same thing. Um, yeah, they're gonna and, and that too. They're gonna be the Shang Nu army as well, which is almost the same as the Hun army. Be right back. Tell a stand, and then one for the White Huns, and one for the Shang Nu. You know the different cavalry. So, but the regular light horse, they're all going to be the same. That I can interchange between them. At least that's what the plan is. That's what the plan is. So, I got enough light horse now, but. I'm going to pick up some of those forge and battle guys. You love utilitarian light horse that can be used for many different army lists. Yeah, that's what I was doing before is painting both sides. But hey, I got somebody helping me paint the Chinese. The Han Chinese, the problem with the Han Chinese, they don't fight anybody who's very exciting. Um, they're around a long time. 
But they don't, you know, I'll be honest with you, Shang Nu, not very exciting. You know, not enough troop types, but. The Light Horse will be cool because it's going gonna, it's gonna to make us create some special rules for the scenarios for the Light Horse. So, there's many, many battles that the Han Chinese fought against them, including one that was in a sandstorm, if I remember correctly. Um, I haven't looked at it in a long time, and I hadn't looked at it from the standpoint of uh, when I had... Um, when I had the army in front of it, you kind of pay a, t a little more attention to those scenarios when you either have the army or are about to build it. So, okay. His accomplices are in red. I think what I'm going to do, because this is a guy that's probably not going to get dirty all the time, I'm probably going to do his sleeves in white, just to show that he's all clean sleeved. There's not much of the sleeve shown. I'm probably going to do his cape in a magenta type color. So halfway between red and purple. That's what I'm going to do. And if I don't like it, I'm freaking repainting it. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to go with. What do we got? Tony Amorite, who I believe is Brian Age. Yep. Is that the pain? Yeah, the problem, with, the problem with the Egyptians is the traditional enemy of the Egyptians is the... Um, Hittites. And... No one makes Hittites that look like they would be fast uh, pike. No one. The, 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 the spears are just too damn short. So if I was going to do a Hittite army, I'd probably replace the spears and make them a little longer. You know, not make them, you know, 14 feet long or something like that. But not make them look like javelins. Because everybody makes them, they look like freaking javelins. They look like, you know, they're only three foot long. I mean, shit, make them at least six foot long, you know. Nowadays, historians are saying, well, historians don't know how to fucking paint. <laughs> Who cares what the Nerdenheimers say? What kind of paints do I use? Uh, mostly um, Vallejo. You had an ex that liked Egyptian stuff. Ah, had a run-in with Osiris, huh? Never cared about their armies. I think the New Kingdom Egyptian army is a very, it's a very good army for a beginner. Um, I'm not saying that an experienced person can't play it, but it's it's got the triad. You got heavy foot, you got shooters, and you got cavalry, or you know chariots. Um, they're just so much cooler than any of their enemies, you know. But I won't. Be, I won't be doing them for the reasons that I laid out. You know, everyone I know has has one. Even when I started playing, everybody had one. And I'm a World War II gamer, so I never got to paint flags. So why would I paint something of a period that has no flags? You know, that's why I'm attracted to you know, the later the later stuff. And I'm a big fan of heraldry. Big fan. Huge. Huge. Huge fan. Now, you know, if I had a heraldry that was, you know, shitty, like a guy bent over blowing a horn out of his ass, maybe I wouldn't be into heraldry. Maybe it'd be better to forget that whole, that whole period. That's that Monty Python part where... They have a little cutouts and they bend over and they blow horns out of their asses in unison. You guys know that. God be praised. <laughs> DBA3 are armies with lots of blades inherently advantaged. 
Well, it depends who you ask. Um, I don't want an army with one troop type. It doesn't matter how good a troop type it is. You don't want a whole army of them. Some people love knights. You don't want 12 of them. They can't deal with terrain. But there's several armies that have all blade. And if you're going to have one troop type, blade's the one to have. Because um, blade can kill knights on ties. Um, sure, they can't go in bad going, but they're a big number. And they can kill cavalry where a spear can't. Uh, I think spear is really well rounded as well, and you can do a lot with a bunch of spear. But um, I would not mind having, if I had to have all of one element, all of one type, I wouldn't want to have all one type. It's freaking boring. But blades aren't bad. So. You're French. Why do you think we have this outrageous accent? Yeah, Republican Romans are, are mostly blade. So they're really solid, but they, they have one trick. And it's a good trick, don't get me wrong. I, I would be... I'd be delighted to have... But just to give you an example, my Republican Romans, I have Polybian and Marian. And I'm about 50-50 on their wins and losses. So, and I tend to not fight civil wars. So, yeah, they're solid, but, you know. Just depends on the die rolls. You can't, it's, they're very solid, but you can't seize the initiative from someone. Um. One thing that I think is really important, and I, I'll be honest with you, and, and it's, it's getting worse the more I play. I'm really not that interested in doing some long strategy about how to win the battle that I'm playing. I just kind of wing it. And um, um, I, you would have heard about it if I would have filmed it the other day, um, if, the, if the camera would, had not disconnected. But... Um, I, I started a position. I, I started I started a position, and um, and every turn I try to improve the situation I'm in. Um, I don't know what the hell that's called, but that's pretty much what I try to do. And you know, and make your opponent react to you, not you react to your opponent. So you keep you know moving, uh, moving towards your goal, and. That's kind of how I play. I don't have some overarching strategy of you know how to do it because if you have an overarching strategy, um, you know all you need is a two for pips and you don't get it. You get a one. Well, now you can't do what you spent all this time thinking about it. All right, next turn I'll roll at least a two. No, you roll the one again. So now you're pissed. Now now you're pissed because you put all this extra work into it, and dice being the fickle things that they are, it's just better to be flexible. So. Um, and the more I play, the more I find myself doing that. So with an army like Republican Romans, the vast majority of your troops are blade, which are great troop types, but they move slow to the point where they're not going to be able to seize the initiative from the opponent as easily. Um, you can make steady progress, but you can't like go out there and go, hey, I'm over here, you know, you're... They see you getting over there slower. I don't know if it's if that makes any sense, but um, you like three blade. They're fast and can go through rough. Everybody likes them. I think they're a little overpowered. To be honest with you, but they didn't ask me. Um, they should have half movement rates in there. Because they really shouldn't be as fast as Auxilia. They really should be two and a half base widths. And um, I prefer the solid ones that they can get into action, but 
There's nothing wrong with fast blade. There's many times that the fast blade do the job because um, they'll cause a unit to recoil instead of keep staying in close combat. I mean, it just depends. It depends what it is. It depends. It depends what what you want out of it. Fast blade, you got to paint well one less figure. <laughs> Yippee! I think I went too bright on that. There we go. Oh, another bastard with eyes. I don't like the paint eyes, but if the guy sculpts them all bulgy and shit, I kind of have to. So I've I've played slightly more than two thousand tournament games, and I'm you know I'm I'm not excited for them anymore. I mean, they're a way to get your own troops on the field and push them around, but I'd rather play other stuff. I'd rather um, play a scenario that has special rules, makes you read a little bit more about history than just throwing Byzantines up against Chinese or something like that. Hey, don't get me wrong. I like open tournaments because then you can use the army that you just painted and instead of like, all right, everybody show up with an enemy of the Sarmatians or something. It's like, well, I don't have one, you know. Well, I guess I won't be able to play. But... We tend at conventions to only run one event where you can run use whatever army you want, and the rest of them are all themed. And some people really like match pairs. I don't. I don't. I don't like it for conventions because they just take too. It too, takes too long. And you got to play four games. And I don't have a problem with playing four games. I have a problem playing four games in four hours. Because you waste a lot of time. Moving from table to table, etc. You know. I mean, if Mitch and I are going to play four games or it, somebody with the same armies over and over again, but picking up your shit, hold on, I left my die there, hold on, let me get behind you, that just takes a lot of time. Oh, it doesn't take a lot of time, it just, it, it's just a rust situation. Playing a few years of Flames of War was enough to kill my enjoyment of tournament settings. That and I tried Warhammer 40k, just had a horrendous time of it. No tournaments for me. I've never played anything that's tournaments other than this. I don't like the random matchups as much as I like scenarios and battles with special rules. Yeah, the problem with scenarios is you got to supply everything and then I got to worry about people ham fisting my stuff. I just have to bring a mallet along.
Now, if we do these scenarios of the Huns, there's going to be a lot of special rules. A lot. A lot of them. So. They will feel like light horse by God. Shit, I just realized that if I did 28s, not that I'm going to, I'd have to do eyebrows. F that. <laughs> I mean, painting eyes in 15s is equivalent to eyebrows in 28s, isn't it? Seems like it would be. Only reason I'll end up, and of course I'll do a video of you know what what I ended up coming back with historicon, which I don't think will be a big thing unless there's things or I get a lot of stuff at the flea market, or I find something that's not readily available. And I'm like, well, I better jump on this now because it's here. But I suspect is I won't pick up a whole lot of stuff, and I'll end up ordering the Huns in route back. But if that's the case, I will probably finish the Byzantines, the Comnenian Byzantines, before I move into the, the Huns. Because I'm going to be over in Hun land for a while. But my goal is to definitely get this guy done tonight. I I don't see I don't see how that wouldn't happen. Um, so that we can um, hit the ground running with a, with a command post on between Saturday and Sunday, which will be definitely very doable. Um, especially because I have a pretty good idea of how I'm going to paint several of the units. All right, we need to do a little leather armor on the back of his neck. Do they sometimes provide armies for tournaments at cons? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, I don't provide them. Um, when, I, when I first started playing, they would collect money from people, and then they would use the money to get a gift certificate for one of the vendors. I, I am the wrong person to go around collecting money from people. I, I, I don't want to do that. So, um, I donate my little awards, which, you know, cost me time and maybe two fifty, three dollars $3 each. I don't want to collect money from anybody. It, it's stupid. Um, and, um, yeah, because if you collect money from some somebody, it's it's really you collect money from everybody to buy to buy figures to um, to donate them to the winner, and the same guys win all the stuff. It kind of discourages new players. I don't know. I've been a new player before, and you know the guys that play all the time. We have plenty of lead. We don't need more lead. So. Um, and I also don't want to do like the guy in Ohio that organized everything. That's why he got burned out. Is he wouldn't? He organized all the DBA in Ohio, from what I understand, and he provided out of the pot the prizes out of his pocket, and he didn't play. 
I'm like, so what did you do wrong in life that you have to suffer like this? You know, you, you got to put all this money out and you, you don't get to enjoy playing, you know? So. Mitch and I will take turns. And if there's an odd number of players, we'll play. And if not, then that one of us won't play. And then the next one, the next time there's a chance for one of us not to play, it'll be the other guy. You know, that's just what we do. Um, you know, I don't think it's a conflict of interest in playing in your own tournament. I mean, what? You've seen all my videos. What, you think I cheat or something like that? We'll go out in the parking lot with swords and settle it. <laughs> but, you know. I mean, we're driving 15 freaking hours all the way across the United States. Or one side of it. I certainly don't want to go up there and what'd you do? Oh, I'm just putting games on. What do you get? Ah, nothing. We don't get to play. Well, that's sadistical. You know? That's not going to want me to stay in a hobby. Never gone to a con to play games. I've gone just to go shopping. I have zero interest in going shopping. Um, I don't need anything. Um, and it's just too easy to just pick it up on the internet if you need it. So I go to socialize with people. That's honestly the big drag. Which is why I won't go to a con that's got masks. I'm not, you can't socialize with people wearing masks. So why would I go? So. That's the big draw for me. Is just have a good time. Go to the Irish bar next door, have a beer, you know. The stuff I can't do really around here. I get enough gaming, so I don't really... I used to go for the gaming because I didn't have uh, anybody to play with locally, so I only got to play a couple times a year. But it's honestly not that big a deal. I'm not even that excited to paint to play these guys. Be honest with you. I'm excited to see how they look finished. But I'm not that excited to paint them, to play them. But it is nice to know that they're able to be played if I wanted to. Not like, well, here's my diorama. But yeah, no wonder the guy got burned out. If you're if you're not doing any of the gaming, you know nobody would vol, you know no nobody would volunteer to run stuff like our show in like our show in Orlando. Okay, you don't get any discount at all by putting on games. Nothing, you know. If you if you show up to play, it costs the same as if you run a game in every session. Well, that's not a very big incentive to run games, now is it? Why would I want to run games and not play in them? You know, I still got to pay for the hotel room and the gas to get there. So the only thing you could do is, I guess, play, you know. But shopping, it used to be shopping was a big draw, but every year I've gone to a convention, there's less and less vendors that have products that I'm interested in. And I don't mean because I've bought them all. I mean, you know, the first year I went to Historicon, Old Glory was there. Cool. Next year, not there. And uh, then eventually uh, Viking Forge stopped coming. Um, uh, the guy that was carrying museum miniatures, he stopped coming. You know? So there's rarely anything I'm interested in. 
It's like, oh, we got a lots of thung things, into, and there's, I'd say, half the stuff isn't even historical that they're selling. So, I like cons to see panels and get autographs. Well, that's a nerd burglar con. Uh, company should show off their new games. Yeah. I don't need deals. I got enough stuff. Fortunately. Unless somebody's going to give stuff away. And I'm like, well, they might as well give it away to me. <laughs> I was looking through a grab bag. Uh, this box the other day. Uh, the other con I went to. And it was like... And of course, you know, I'm like, and I, I hate bartering. Well, how much is this? Well, how much you want to give me for it? I, I'm like, fuck that. I hate that stuff. I hate that game, you know? Like, you're the seller. You need to tell me how much it's going for, you know? Because I'm not a haggler. I either like it or I don't like it, you know? I'm not like, well, I'm either interested in it or I'm not. So it's like, you know, uh, 30 bucks. Uh, I'll give you 25 I'm I'm not there. I'd give the guy tw thirty bucks, or I wouldn't give, or I'm not interested in it at all. That's just not my personality. I am not a haggler. It's only thirty bucks. It's not like your life is going to change dramatically one way or the other. You don't haggle at a at a at a restaurant. Well, how much is the burger? Oh, it's fifteen dollars. Uh, fuck, I'll have it if you have. Can I have it for eleven? You know. So I hate haggling. But anyways, I was looking through this box. I'm like, you looking for anything in particular? I forget exactly what his dialogue was, but we'll pretend that's what he said. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm just looking to see what, what you have in there. He's like, 10 bucks, a whole box. And I'm like, well, hold on a second. Let me look through. I'm like, oh, elephant, 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 elephant. There was like 10 elephants in there. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. And I stopped looking. And I'm like, I'll look later what it is. So I got a bunch of elephants. Wasn't even looking for elephants, but I'm like, okay, they're... Um, and some of them were elephants I didn't care for, but some of them were ones that I did. So yeah, I got a bunch of elephants for ten bucks. I'm like, all right, I'll I'll throw ten dollars away for that. Okay, so we're gonna do like a magenta colored cape, huh? All right, here we go. This is the color right here. Companies do show up new games, but I, I think I don't think they come to Historicon. They go to other shows. The man giving orders ready. Oh, I like your J icon. That's about the color his cape is going to be. It's going to be kind of fruity. Fruity. He's getting there. I got to finish him today. I don't think that's going to be a problem. What good does it do if you give orders if nobody listens to you? Joe, you packed up yet? <laughs> I got to make a freaking list. I don't want to forget something. So, Joe, I actually figured out what I'm, army I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm going to actually build the Numidians. And I'm going to make it a point to lose every fucking game with them. I'm going to run them into the ground. <laughs> I pulled up the stats on me fighting Numidians. And I fought them 22 times. And I think I beat them four times. Now... Don't get me wrong. It's not like I was fighting. You know, they were evenish type engagements. It wasn't like I was using like, you know, if you want to crush the Numidians, yeah, show up with my freaking uh, Burgundians. You know, and the cast of, they'll uh, just show up with pincushions, turn them into pincushions. You know, we're talking, nobody wants to fight those kind of bat. Well, actually, I kind of, I wouldn't mind. But, 
Let me see if we want to use that color or this other kind of fruitier color. Uh, maybe this one. Maybe this one isn't as fruity. Yeah, I think I like this one better. Maybe we'll put them both out here. Oh, you like Numidians. Well, they suck. They're just lucky as shit. It's not like the army is, just, is that great. They're just lucky as shit. Or I'm unlucky as shit against them. They do not motivate me to paint based on what they look like. They don't have any headgear and animal skins and not very exciting. But you know what? Alexander might actually have been a better commander than Hannibal had, he not, had Hannibal not had the Numidians. Just saying. They were definitely a factor historically. When did he get his ass kicked? When the Numidians switched sides. True story. We're going to use the, the darker color first. I just don't want it to look too purple. Because I don't envision this guy being the emperor. They don't always get used. The imitation legionnaires don't always get used because they slow down your force. They didn't get used the other night. Two people used Numidians and neither one of them used the legionnaires. I don't think either one used them. This, this guy's got something else here. We'll paint in the same color. And then later we might realize, oh shit, we can't do that in that color because that's not that piece of equipment. Sometimes you just got to start painting to realize what something is. Like, oh, that's, where it, that's what that is. All right, let's bring this up. You like them. Is there an army you don't like? Is there an army, Kevin, you wouldn't build just come on, on who they are? I know lots of people that have Numidians. There's really no point in building them. I'd just be satisfactory just run their ass into the ground. Uh, couldn't imagine Alexander falling for his own tactics, let alone being stuck in Italy for the length of time Hannibal was not and come away with winning. Well, Alexander was in charge of his whole country, and Hannibal was, you know, Hannibal basically started the war on his own, and um, the the Carthaginian Senate said, you're on your own, dumbass, you know. Alexander would take a battle directly to Romans, not giving them the time to raise more armies. That's true. Uh, Hannibal is too consumed with revenge. Honestly, you don't find it to be that great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. We'll never know. I wouldn't want my, com my army commanded by Alexander. He took too many risks. And he almost got killed a couple times. Several times. And no, no doubt about him being brave. There's no doubt about that, but he led by example. So if you like a general that is up there in the front and mixing it up, causing casualties himself with his own weapon, yeah, Alexander's definitely more than Hannibal because that's not Hannibal's style. Now, Hannibal could do it if he had to, but he's more of a manager, you know, whereas um, Alexander had... More confidence and and had more ability in his junior commanders than Hannibal did. 
But anyhow. So Phil Barker considers Demetrius a brilliant general, and I don't know why. I don't know why, because Demetrius was like an Alexander. He would run off. He was like an Alexander that wasn't successful, because Alexander at least was successful. Demetrius would go and, you know, he would like charge off the field. He would kick the shit out of the, you know, one wing, but then he would leave the rest of the, left, left of the battle there. You know, and yeah, he did sieges and stuff like that, but... I think I think Demetrius's record is about 50-50. I think Demetrius's record is 50-50. The only lasting thing that Demetrius did is at least his son? His son or his grandson? Yeah, well his his dynasty ended up basically taking over uh, Macedonia. Took it away from Cassander. So even though Cassander was successful, you know, he didn't have he didn't have one of his people on the throne. <laughs> Not a fan of Islamic armies. Okay. All you hear is excuses. Well, maybe if Alexander hadn't wanted to turn Macedonia into Persia, somebody wouldn't have murdered him. And I actually approve of that. Uh, I'm fine for being revenge, but if you go and say, hey, we're going to we'll take revenge on the Persia. How are we going to do that? We're going to turn our country into Persia. Well, fuck you. Here's, here, have a drink on me. <laughs> His record is like one in three. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Now, you know, he's... Maybe that's the guy I should build. I'm like, hey, I did better than him historically. Find out the biggest losers build those armies. I did a lot better than them. <laughs> oh, man. You know, Phil Barker, you know, I actually don't have a problem with Phil on pretty much anything except John Lackland's a brilliant, brilliant general. Come on. No, I mean, come on. Come on. That guy sucked. That guy sucked on just about every level. I mean, there could have been worse people out there. Don't get me wrong. Freaking, um... Um, Longshank's son. Longshank's son was worthless, you know? But he's not considered a brilliant general by uh, Phil Barker. John Lackland. Come on. Let's see, what happens if I add a little bit of this color to it? Okay. I'm good with that.
He wanted it blend east and west. Okay. Well, I disapprove. <laughs> oh, man. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Revenge does make the best movies. Got a big Persian Civil War thing too. They always fighting each other. What do we make of Pyrrhus? My my favorite, my favorite Macedonian type general. Although I don't consider him a successor. I didn't just get off my ass and paint his army. I got all the stuff for him. Got the right elephants and everything. A chump. <laughs> At least he didn't get murdered by his own people. Got. Some bitch threw a roof tile and hit him upside the head. <laughs> Old Pyrrhus. I like him. I think he's very interesting. And he fought a real enemy, unlike the Persians. They just fell apart. <laughs> I do not think Pyrrhus is better than Alexander. He's more, I think he's more interesting. Everybody's into Alexander, almost everybody. And you know, sometimes it's more fun playing the underdog. And he had elephants the whole time. Alexander may have used elephants, but towards the end, and that really wasn't his thing. It was, you know, he didn't need them. And again, don't get me wrong. I don't think elephants are some super weapon. They're cute. They're fun to paint. Everybody likes them because... You can't use them in World War II, for instance. You know, they're fun to paint. You get to make elephant noises. You know, I don't think they're a super weapon. I'd rather have heavy infantry than them. I'd rather say I got murdered by my own people than some ornery tart did me to a roof tile. Yeah, that's not so good. Well, he mixed it up. That battle there at the end is pretty interesting. If you've read the details of supposedly what happened. With the tower that couldn't fit under the gate and the mama elephant and the baby elephant. And it's almost like a movie. But the problem with Pyrrhus is he didn't have control of Macedonia. So even if he would have beaten the Romans completely at those three battles he did not have the infrastructure to get more troops unless he paid he just didn't have the economy i mean Pyrrhus is basically like you know indiana trying to take out the united states i mean you know it just the pirates just doesn't have any infrastructure whatsoever There needs to be a berserk rule for elephants in DBA. There kind of is, but it could be improved. I'm not arguing with you at all. I, I think that my short-term goal is to do scenarios that are more reflective of, of what happened or what could happen in these situations than DBA allows us to do. And down the road, 
a decade or so when decide to pull the trigger on on doing our own thing we'll have some history on and play testing on how some of this stuff works if that makes any sense but um i i don't want to just say hey we're going to play elephants like this in tournament game. I, I don't want to fracture shit, okay? The tournaments are great because you show up it, and it motivates people to build their own army. You show up and everybody's playing the same way. But if it's like, okay, we're going to do the battle of Yu Ling or something like that. And we're going to make light horse that are like this in this particular battle. And it's still DBA-ish. Um, I think that's the way forward. I, I don't want to just, you know, it would be too difficult to work on all the other kind of stuff. You know, and it's going to be really difficult to balance things out when it's against troop types that never fought against each other. You know? So, we'll get there one slow step at a time. And maybe something will come along that we like better. Unlikely. I thought Mortimer Glorian was going to be pretty cool. I watched a couple videos on it. And there's some interesting stuff about it. But you have to do the same conforming that you do now. And I, I'm not going to learn another set of rules and still have that problem. That feels fakey. Guys, this is turned out pretty good. I'm just gonna stick to painting because I I can't paint I can't play worth a shit. Well I rolled like crap the other day. I don't let it get me down though because it's not like I'm gonna pack up and stop work playing war game or like, oh I don't want to play games that have any dice in them. Shit, I've won lots of games because of dice. My brother won't even play me because he thinks that I've got my luck dice is too much. Well, I don't let the dice get in my damn head. You invisible again? I see seven people. I wish I could tell who was on here. You know, you guys have weird... You got some kind of Mexican internet out there in <laughs> Arizona, Stan? Mexican internet in Arizona stand. All right, I, I I like I like this color. I like this color. We're going to we're going to leave it as is. All right, this guy needs a beard, and yes, it's going to have gray in it because you know this guy wasn't born yesterday. Yesterday. We don't want to make this guy super over the top because that's going to be the that's going to be the that's going to be the emperor. He's super over the top, like red boots and all, right? Oh yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do the peacock feathers on his thing, but we'll figure it out. I've seen other versions, and it's painting. I can do the painting part. Uh oh, we got a fluff on the, on the thing. I got this painting shit down. And if I see something on the internet which I like better than the stuff that I paint and and I I come across it pretty frequently. I don't get bummed out about it. I'm like, up oh, time to up the game. We we'll have to call this guy El Viejo. El Viejo Bizantino. Okay, I don't want to do a gold helmet. I think it's way over the top. He's not the king. I think a shiny silver is enough on it. 
let's have you guys take a look at this guy so far. I, I haven't been... Let's see, he's way far away. We need, we're going to need to zoom this in. Let's uh, let's do this. Come on, bring that thing up. All right, I'm gonna need it. Man, the color's really washed out. Let's see if I can tinker with this and make it less bright. This cape turned out really well. I love painting cloth things. You know, when they're really ripply, I think they turn out, I think they turn out really well. I think most paint jobs look better on the internet than in person. I don't think they look better on video, that's for sure. Oh, man. My paint jobs look better the further you stand from them. <laughs> I had one guy said, man, you paint too dark. I'm like, no, we're just painting. We're playing in shitty conditions. You know, you guys can't see it, but the lighting that I have right here is damn near perfect. But, you know, it's it's perfect for what I'm doing, not for, you know, filming. minimize this come on minute there we go all right um super shiny all right well let's still do it like the regular steel and then we can bring it up as we need to all right So rumor is Mitch has got another Alexander army coming. Looks all gray, yeah. Yeah, it's no good. It isn't. Mitch has got another Alexander army coming because he's not a painter, so he's got to buy whatever people are selling. So... I'll never build an Alexander army because of that. There's no reason to. That's going to end up getting a Nolan Oil treatment. We have a sword scabbard. We're going to do that in red. And we've got the sword to do as well. Let's, um, let's go ahead and just... I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it anyways. Let's go ahead and paint the sword in this color, even though it's going to be the super shiny color. I have some of this on the base. The tuft on the horse. Everybody has a red one except the guys on the command stand have a white one. I'm not going to put a white one on him because it's already a white horse and there's already white on the shield. There's too much and it would be right next to it. So I think I'm going to do a yellow one. I think I'm going to do a yellow tuft on there. The alternative is to also do almost like that. Maybe the pink one won't be bad. Let's do the pink one. Let's do the pink. And I've looked at a lot of drawings. It's not like I'm just pulling things out of my... A lot of stuff you just have to pull out of your ass and just think what goes well. Because 
the information just isn't out there. You know, you want all the answers, and they just—it's just somebody's rendition and 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 um, interpretation, anyways. Now, what I've seen is I've seen many people do the emperor with a light blue cape, so that's what I'm going to go with, because the horse, the entire barding of the horse is purple, because that's what Phil Barker says. It's on a purple caparisoned horse, so it'll be a, a purple horse. And we'll have some symbols on the horse. I'm not going to give anything away. But um, if you think about it, what I've done, what it probably might be. So we're going to have some crosses with the little dots on them and, and a key row on there and that kind of stuff. It's not just going to be like purple and have a nice day. You know, there's going to be some stuff on it. Um, so the whole horse is mostly going to be purple. And that's really the only purple guy on that whole stand. So he should stand out pretty nicely from everybody else on there. Let's bring more of this pinkish color here. And I'm probably going to do the little tuft on this helmet. It's probably going to be white, not red. Because all the commoners have red. Red just probably really cheap to get. Figured, oh, give this guy white. And, oh, man, it looks really pristine and stuff. Yeah, he doesn't get his hands dirty. Screw that. <laughs> he showed up at the battlefield to look good. It's full on pink. That'll work. Middle Eastern cultures and stuff like the, you know, I was reading somewhere. Some They thought it was like a color of manliness or whatever. Well, maybe, but not if you wear it as pants. Okay. Nobody, nobody's running around in pink pants and they go, man, that guy's a badass. We got a little bit of bronze. Do we have any bronze left? It's alive. Is the bronze alive? Oh, yeah. I think I did the right thing, not painting these guys. And I may end up brightening some of this up with gold. We'll see how that goes. Um, not painting these guys' armor is chain mail. Because, hell, it isn't chain mail. I mean, if if it's supposed to be chain mail, then the sculptor shouldn't have sculpted it the way they did. Because that's not chain mail. That's not what chain mail looks like. That's not a pattern of it. Or anything metal, for that matter. Okay, we're going to go ahead and have a little bit of this on the edge, too. All right. 
right, and there's a little bit of a saddle underneath there. I'm gonna go with a lighter color so it pops from that. And I think the color, I should be able to use the this um, US Field, nope, that's not US Field Drab. That's not either. It's hard to see when it's... Right. Put the glasses back on so we can find it. It should be right here. There it is. You have pink pants. Nobody's saying you're a badass, Dirk, though. Hey, you with the pink pants. Yes! <laughs> but I read somewhere, I was reading some Middle Eastern, it might have been like Persian or something like that, that said, you know, it was a manly color, the Rajputs or something when I was doing my Rajputs. So I got some pink guys on my Rajputs, but, you know, they're not wearing a pink jumpsuit. Superman does that on occasion when his red shorts start fading to pink. Why did they decide to put superheroes' underwear on the outside? What? Why was that a decision made? For those of you comic book people, I'm not a comic book person, so I don't have the answer to that. Why is that? Dirk is a badass in his part of the world. Well, what's that mean? What's that mean? People in New Zealand are... Less calloused than in other places. <laughs> Pink used to look good on me when I was much younger. <laughs> Sounds like something a child molester would say. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, back to reality here. What, what did I do with that color? Here it is. Yeah, we don't have much on this guy. He's done. And no, we're not going to be able to paint Rick's favorite guy first. The hornblower guy is not going to be the first guy. We've got to do the four Varangian guard guys. Then we can do the hornblower. But we should still, he should still get painted tomorrow. I don't know, is Rick even on here? Is he lurking? Come out, come out wherever you are. Still got to do the red for the uh, the sheet. He's got a little dagger thing too. We'll do that in the same color as well. I think I'm going to be pretty happy with how it turns out. And then... You do the ceiling, you seal them, they look even better. I don't know what kind of magic that is, but. I've never sealed anything and it looked worse. Got me over just inflating Dirk's ego. <laughs> Varangian guards for the CP? Uh, four of them, yes. He may be lurking like the scoundrel he is. I'm pretty sure when, he, when he's on here, he's doing something else, too. He may be grinding in um, Skyrim or something like that. 
which I don't blame them. I, um, I'm, I don't mind video games, but I do not want to grind in them. That's just wasteful when I could be doing something else. Okay, this looks all right. Let's get, let's get, oh, the buff. Yeah, let's go ahead and do the buff. We can do the shoes afterwards. Maybe we could do some reddish type shoes. Um, buff. Buffy Buffelstein. I wanted to build a um, a Hebrew army, but once I found out they would just look very Hellenic, I'm like, well, that kind of defeats the purpose in doing them. I'm not that opposed that I'm doing a Hellenic army, but I mean, I guess I could kind of put my own spin on them, but something like Herod's army, I've always wanted to do something like that. And they fit well with the armies that we have and enemies and stuff like that. Illegal in 48 states. What are the two states it's illegal in? California and... You do whatever the hell you want when you're at home. You do whatever the hell you want when you're at home. And you're downwind of me. <laughs> Honeydew time, and you're cleaning the kitchen. We'll put her to painting. Did the Varangians look fancy or like Vikings? Yes. Cleaning is for chumps. Today's word is chump. Sounds like something off of Get Smart. <laughs> Cleaning's for chumps. At least we've got lots of stuff we can listen to when we're cleaning and stuff, you know? I'm not necessarily saying this, but I ended up listening to... I was actually painting in one-to-one -one scale earlier this year. I was painting a door. So I put on somebody's video that they were doing and interacted, interacted with them. I guess kind of like what you guys are doing here. It's a lot better than listening to... Well, talk radio is just people arguing about shit. Um, or sports or stuff like that, but these are lots of stuff to listen to now. You know, makes the time not so torturous. Whether you're cleaning up or mowing the lawn or something on Audible or a long drive, it's fortunate we got lots of options now. So I like listening to talk radio, but I don't want to listen to people's politics because they're just, what flavored lie do you want? And I don't give a shit about sports, especially people arguing about them. So, when you hear chumps, I think Futurama. I think I've seen one episode of Futurama and I wasn't grabbed. I'm not grabbed by cartoons that I can draw better than. Get Smart, you were trying to think of that show today. I don't know that I've seen an episode of Get Smart. Ever. <laughs> but I obviously know about it. Okay, let's go with... Let's use dark red for the boots. I mean, we're not going to do the bright ones like the Emperor, but we'll do dark red. It's a trendy fashion style. Uh, not that one. Even though that one's called dark red. This is a... This color is wet as shit. It doesn't cover worth a damn. Indeed, Bender uses it. That's like the robot, isn't it? Chumps and chumpettes. I want to watch a cartoon where somebody uses Nerd Burglar. Damn Nerd Burglar. I'm about to see a few of those in the next couple days.
what does they say on the Simpsons ride? Nerdenheimer. Ah, shut up, Nerdenheimer. That show's still on? There's so many of those cartoons, and I don't watch any of them. I mean, I, I guess I've watched maybe 10 episodes of The Simpsons ever. But what they got? The Simpsons and Futurama got to be made by the same people, right? Because the art is almost the same. But then you've got like American Dad and Bob's Burgers and, and two or three other things that are like that. And they all don't look very good. You know, and I'm thinking I, I could do better art than that. I don't know. Maybe it's for the dialogue, not for the art, right? You're on the last episode of season four of Stranger Things. Better than season three. Well, season three sucked because of the Russians. I think the mall was the right venue to do. I mean, the mall is... Nothing says the 80s like the mall. I honestly don't rewatch things, so... Season 1 was awesome. Season one was awesome. I didn't care what happened in Russia at all. I didn't carry the, I didn't care what happened, what happened there one bit. I just, I liked season one because the kids were freaking scared of crap. You know, they weren't like, well, everybody's scared except the kids, man. They're real heroes, man. They're like, you know, and that's how most shows do things. The, the adults are scared, but the kids are brave. I've been a kid before. The kids are scared of shit, man. All right. What color helmet did we say we were going to do? We were going to do white. I'm thinking pink might be the way to go. That same pink. Let's do that same pink. Fuck it. Um, surprise Hopper still has meat on his bones. Yeah, I like how he broke his leg and then he's okay. Yeah, season one just had so many, so many good things about it. First of all, I hate television because you're just, it's not thinking, you know, and I'm not a, I don't like a, I'm not, I don't mean like a whodunit. I mean, season one really makes you think like, okay, this is here and they're in the same spot, but there are the, you know, so you're like thinking, not heavy thinking, but it's, it's really cool. I, I thought it was really cool. And you're learning things as the viewer at the, at the same time that the characters are learning stuff.
I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was really, really brilliant. And one of the best things I've seen in like 20 years. Definitely. And I was the same age those kids were in that year. So that's kind of cool too. Although I've never been to Indiana. Nor have any plans to go. <laughs> it's neither here nor there. That's one thing that a lot of shows get wrong. Is people's reaction, the character's reaction to situations. Um, the first time I noticed that. And I've only seen the movie once, okay? So if I get it wrong, my apologies. I haven't seen it in 30 years. From Dust Till Dawn. Um, From Dust Till Dawn is starts off like a regular movie, and then it turns into a vampire movie. But when it turns into a vampire, people are like, there's no like shock and awe. They're like, oh, there's vampires. Okay. And not like, you know, they didn't have realistic reactions of, of things like, I think that season one of Stranger Things handled things right. And most most shows do it wrong. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't, people don't have the right reaction to stuff. Um, what's that movie that everybody hated? Cloverfield. Okay. I didn't think it was that bad. The first one. Um, the second one was actually okay, except the ending. Um, the ending sucked. I, I hate alien stuff. I hate stuff that involves aliens. I think it's stupid. Um, when they're done in most ways. Um, I'm not a fan of alien. Just like uh, Scott. Scott from our game group hates things that have time travel. Um, and I hate aliens. But anyhow. Um, the first Cloverfield... You know, it just starts like a regular movie and then you've got this Godzilla type character. And if I'm spoiling the movie for you, you need to go and watch it because it's been out for freaking 30 years, okay? So, sorry. I'm not going to give any spoilers other than that. But um, not a single person that saw this creature for the first time made some kind of a dialogue reference. Like, it's like... I know they can't use Godzilla probably because it's copyrighted, but a dinosaur or, you know, something. They just kind of went about their business and, and their their dialogue, what people would have said in real life is nothing like what the characters said. It was so wooden and fake. And I'm like, who reads these? Most, most shows, most movies have bad writing, not necessarily bad acting. Now, there are, there are things that have bad acting, but those generally don't. Don't make it out into the public. Um, most actors do okay. Um, but it's just the writing is just piss poor sometimes. Like, who are you fooling, man? I'm not seven years old. So anyways, Stranger Things Season 1, excellent. Especially that pool scene. I was like, I didn't know where this was going to go. I didn't know what kind of show this was, you know? I'm like... Oh shit, it's a jump scare show. Luckily it's not. I don't really like those. And um, Will's brother is worthless. Just absolutely worthless. He's just a worthless character. He wasn't worthless in season one. He's worthless now. It's like, why even have that guy around? What, does he need to have some kind of an income so he can buy more drugs and get busted at the airport again? Uh, Lisa show doesn't promote drug use as like, you know, being good for you.
Uh, I tried to watch a Marvel movie with my daughter. I've pretty much given up on... I, I've officially given up on superhero movies. They're just absurd. Not superhero movies. How about the Marvel, whatever they call it, the, where they're all interlocked? F that. I ain't got time for that nonsense. It's all over the place. They make some fake websites for Cloverfield. Interesting. I didn't think it was bad. Uh, and I didn't mind the ending either. Um, I think more movies need to have non-happy endings. Something's going on here. We need to go. This is going sideways. This is going sideways. It's turning into the color of the. Cape. But the problem with Cloverfield, in my opinion, was that, you know, the people's reaction, like whoever wrote the reaction dialogue, just, you know, they didn't do a very good job with it. All right, now we're back on track. Have I seen how it ends? Probably the biggest disappointment in a long time. I see how it ends. I see the plot. That's my kind of plot. Okay? I love that kind of plot. Okay? Um, the first half of the movie is awesome. I'm watching this. I'm like, I got to stop watching this and watch it with Mitch. Because it's the kind of movies that we like. You know, basically like, you know, civilization falls apart. Kind of in, you know, infrastructure falls apart. And you got to fend for yourself. You know? Which is... The attraction that I think of something like Walking Dead, it isn't the zombies, but it's like, there's no rules and there's no morality. How do you live your life? And, and that, I kind of like that, you know, that kind of concept. But the, end, the second half of the movie, it's like they ran out of money. It's like just all of a sudden it's like, all right, that's it. Tomorrow's the last filming day. What do you mean? We got to go like another, oh, sorry, that's it. We got to wrap it up. That's what it felt like. Um, but I see this movie. I like the plot. Forrest Whitaker's in it. Big fan of Forrest Whitaker. Um, and I, you know, yeah, it was horrible. The ending was horrible. Absolutely horrible. It's like they ran out of funds, you know. But that's the kind of movie that I like those kind of movies. Where it's like, you know, there's a breakdown and whatever. And you've got to fend for yourself. What do you do? You know. All right, let's go grab some... Let's go grab some ammo and, you know, go fend for ourselves. I like that. I like that kind of stuff. The other movie that I thought was awesome, and I've, I've seen it actually four times. Four times? Three times? I've seen it at least three times. I don't watch movies again, but I've seen it three times. Well, the funny thing is, is I forgot the details about it the previous two times when I saw it the third one. You know, it's like a movie that I saw on my own, and I liked it. So I went over a couple years later and showed it to my mom, because my mom does action movies and stuff like that. So we watched it over there, and I had forgotten some of the details. And then my daughter got old enough to be able to see it, so I watched it a third time with my daughter. That kind of thing. And I wish I had more movies that were like this. And the movie is um, it's called Vantage Point. Um, and I love that kind of... I like assassination-type Terrorist, counter-terrorist type stuff. And that one's cool because 
you get to see it from the different angles. But I understand that that's a pain in the ass to make that kind of a movie. But I'm just telling you what I enjoy. I mean, it's, I thought it was, um, I really enjoyed that movie. I wish there was more movies like that. Just like I wish there was more movies like Memento. But Memento's a pain in the freaking ass to make. You like that the ending wasn't right off into the sunset. Yeah, but it was an ending that was rushed. It was That ending was more rushed than the last season of Game of Thrones. And that's saying something. That's saying something. You really like Japanese disaster movies like Japan Sinks. They're never that great, but the theme that I like. I don't like themes where humanity where humanity ends. I I just don't like them. I don't like those type of themes. I think they're disturbing. I'm always going to pick the other side that's against human humanity ending. Just so you know. <laughs> I don't like that. Just like I don't like horror movies where it's like, you know, the plot is innocent people get killed. You know, it's not like collateral damage or something like that. It's like, no, they specifically picked out some cute cheerleader that gets murdered horrifically for no reason because the director couldn't get laid when he was 18 years old. You know, well, that's the reasoning I put behind it. I just think it's sick and twisted. I don't like it. It bothers me. Um... I have a daughter, not cool. You like science fiction, but too many are bees. I don't like science fiction because it has too many things that are too far-fetched. You know, at what point is something feasible? You know, maybe that's not important to you, but it is to me. Oh my God, I had a moment where I was thinking I had to work tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I don't. <laughs> Good, because I wouldn't get this shit done if I did. Um, science fiction movies that I like. All right. I like the original Alien. And even Aliens, I went back. I remember when I saw Aliens way back in the day. I wasn't impressed like everybody else. But I watched it in the last 10 years, and, and it was better than I thought it was the first time I watched it. It's okay, you know. Um, I actually was one of the people. I went to go see... What's that movie that, that people are really split on? I know, that doesn't narrow it down. And I know I'm not talking about Thin Red Line. Um... I don't know anybody who likes that movie, but I know that there's people that do. Um, Star, Star, uh, Starship Troopers. I remember seeing Starship Troopers with a group. I didn't know anything about it. Never read the books. I thought it was hilarious. But again, I was okay with it being over the top and stupid. You know? It didn't bother me. The movie that bothered me more and I didn't care for and lots of people did was Mars Attacks. And I hated Mars Attacks. And it's, you know, stupid as well. You know, the sci-fi that sounds feasible are better. Yeah, you can't have everything make-believe. You know, just change a couple things, you know. That's why I really like that series. Um, Black Mirror. Because Black Mirror... 
only takes like one thing that's more advanced than what we have now, but it's pretty much present day. You know, you like Star. I've only seen Starship Troopers one time. You know, and um, I didn't know what to expect, and um, it's hilarious. And I saw it with the right people. You know, I saw it with you know people that enjoyed laughing at the goofy shit. And I think that the special effects were awesome for the day. I remember them being like the bugs and shit. I mean. But never plan on reading the books. It's freaking... Why would I read that? Uh, what else have I seen that's science fiction that I liked? It's not really a genre I go for. Are zombie movies science fiction? I like that. Um, the zombie movie that's the mall. Is it Day of the Dead? They all sound the same freaking thing. Something of the Dead. That one was okay. You think Slytherin just did a science? They did, but it's um, it it's like um, I I think it's 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 kind of like a a, a Warcraft thing where it's like you got to tell you you're kind of, it's like constantly managing little little assholes that run around that that's that's just too stressful. Uh, I think the main character is Filipino in the book. Well, that's interesting. That's a different take, huh? Zombie movies or zombie movies. Okay. I should write down. I've seen more science fiction than westerns. I'm not I'm not a I'm not a fan of westerns. Again, it's a time period that's I'm like, eh, you know. My people weren't here yet. Eh, can't relate, you know. Only 6 rounds. Uh, I watch movies when they have when they have more rounds in the chamber. Science fiction, science fiction. Let me think. I mean, I grew up watching science fiction because we didn't have anything else. I grew up watching Lost in Space. If you wanted to watch TV on Sunday morning, you're going to watch whatever's on freaking TBS. That's like the only freaking channel that we got that had any, any, anything that wasn't like, you know, religious programming or something like that. Um, so, you know, I watched quite a few episodes of Lost in Space, not because I liked it, because it was on, you know. Um... Just one of them things. I was, at one point, all the alien movies were on, I'm going to say HBO or something like that. And I'm like, F it, I'm going to watch them in order. And I'd seen the first and the second one, that's it. I hadn't seen any other ones. So I watched the first one again. I'm like, okay, this is still pretty good. Other than that one scene where she's trying to communicate whatever, she's in this like Star Trek room with all the freaking lights all going on, you know, a la old Star Trek style, which was hokey. But um, other than that, I thought the movie held up pretty well. Uh, watched the second one, and I'd never seen the third one. Watched the third one, and it, it did not leave me any interest for watching any more after that. So that's as far as I got, you know. So I haven't seen it. Where the predators and them tie in together. I guess they tie in together into each other. Haven't seen that. Really, no point in it, you know. I love that science fiction movie that very people have heard of or didn't or didn't like. Was that one, that whole one that's filmed like a first-person shooter, Hardcore Henry? I thought it was freaking hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. If you've played any first-person shooter games and you like them, that was a hilarious freaking movie. It was so good, I was 10 minutes in and I stopped watching. I'm like, no, nope, I'm watching this with Mitch. Orville now is good to me. 
2001 Space Otomy. Uh, let's see. Star Wars is Star Wars. Is Stranger Things sci-fi? I, I, guess, I guess it is. Yeah. Star Wars is Star Wars. 2001 Space Odyssey. Everybody's a fan of that. And um, I think I've seen it twice. The first time I'm watching it, that scene towards the end where the alien or whatever is just eating, I, I thought something was going to jump out at me. I, I was, I mean, it was a non-event. It, it's something about that is super, super creepy. Um, almost like a movie, I guess, that would be considered science. Well, no, it's actually fantasy. What's that? The Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth. That freaking creature was scary as shit. Um, but yeah, I thought that thing, something was going to happen. Not like a non-event. You know? Yeah, I didn't really care for 2001 Space Odyssey. But, you know... I'm not 15 years older than I am. I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't resonate for me or anything. Maybe I didn't like the ending of it. Is it a happy ending or not a happy ending? Well, do you want it to be a happy ending or not having a happy ending? Just tell me the freaking ending. <laughs> oh, man. Star Child. I'm thinking I'm calling this camp. I'm painting done. Make it so. Pan's Labyrinth turned out to be a Nazi movie. Mm, I, I disagree. I mean, it was made by a communist. My brother didn't want to watch it. He's a communist. He's not going to turn you into a freaking communist watching the movie. And, you know, the nationalists weren't nice guys, you know. I, I got a book that I need to, I need to, I, I, there's no point in me playing Spanish Civil War though. That's why I haven't done it. But I'd really like to read something really unbiased about the Spanish Civil War. Although I, I have a feeling it's going to be extremely hard to find something really unbiased about that. But I have my own kind of personal feelings about it, uneducated personal feelings about it. And I'd like to read more about it and see if they're, you know, how they change or they're unfounded or what have you, but. Spanish Civil War, I suspect, is just like the Eastern Front, World War II. They're both dickheads, you know? I don't, I don't mind watching things that I consider propaganda or skewed one way. I, you know, I'm a big boy. I'm not going to all of a sudden uh, change how I am. Yes, it's Del Toro. Wearing the wedding ring today. Am I? I well, yeah. I, I do every day. I just sometimes shower and don't put it back on. Can't wear the bracelet thing. It gets in the way. Uh, still haven't seen Pan's Labyrinth. I think it's worth watching. I think it's worth watching. Uh, it's very well done. I don't know that it has a message. Um, if it has a message, I don't really like the message that it has. Um, I think it's I think it's a well done movie worth watching for sure. Um, and it's definitely not for kids. Um, just it's got some scary shit in there. You know. Even the main guy that's not supposed to be scary is scary, you know? Um, I 
but it's worth watching, I think. And it's a really high quality film. You know, I, I think the days of where they make things that don't look good in other countries is well behind us. The movie with David Bowie. No. No, that's Labyrinth. That's Labyrinth, Labyrinth. Don't watch that. No, that's, that's, that's not good. I uh, saw one Del Toro movie, wasn't impressed, which was Pacific Rim. I didn't, oh, I didn't know that he did that one. Uh, I like the I like the first Pacific Rim for what it was. Um, I think the monsters look cool in that. Although I think one of the most impressive monsters I've seen is um, the remake of Clash of the Titans, the Kraken in that one. It's like. He's bigger in the freaking city. <laughs> I'm like, you're screwed. It's time. To... Hey, it's time to, it's time to invite the Persians in. Oh yeah, come in. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a big party and then go scamp around somewhere. I'm gonna go deal with the big guy. <laughs> you're the immortals, not anymore. <laughs> not fighting that big nasty. He looked cool. He looked cool. Uh, let's see. We need to do a color for... Uh, we're just going to use this. We're going to use this buff color because it's got lots of contrast. Contrast is important. Contrast make things pop. You know, and it just depends what you like. There is a movie that came out that unanimously everybody liked except me. I'm sure there's people that didn't like it, but I didn't encounter any. Everybody's like, oh, it's a great movie, it's a great movie, it's a great movie. And no, I'm not talking about the Firefly stuff. Although I'm the only one that doesn't like Firefly. But anyhow, um, that's okay. It's the burden I have to live with. Um, they should have cast different people. Um, except the prostitute. You can keep her. Um, <laughs> was... Um, um, Inception. I, ten minutes in, I'm like, and I like DiCaprio, and I like the Japanese dude. Didn't like it. It just wasn't there for me. Way too far fetched. Way too far fetched. Did you dis Labyrinth? Well, I know why you wanted to watch it, but you know she was underage, dude. Um, <laughs> Love the purple on that guy. Catch me tonight. Contrast is the single most essential thing in painting figures. No, Lab Labyrinth was Labyrinth was terrible. Come on, man. And Labyrinth was terrible just because it was like a bad music video with like the little goblins and shit like that. that that was no good. And I don't think she's aged very well. Because she's like... I think she's my age or something like that. Maybe she's a year older than me. She has. I don't think she's aged very well. The one I haven't seen is Willow. Is Willow worth watching? Probably not. Probably looks like shit now. I always wanted to see it for that bad guy. They have a bad guy on there that looks similar to the... Oh, man. What's that What's that Dungeons & Dragons game that has the... Baldur's Gate. There's somebody in Baldur's Gate or something like that. Or Dragonlance. Maybe it's Dragonlance. They have some character in Dragonlance that 
that has some kind of a horny helm or something like that, like that dude. I don't know. It's probably probably too late to watch. I've never seen it, so uh, probably not worth watching either. You know, movies don't appeal to everybody. Oh, another movie everybody likes except me. Well, I don't know. Maybe there are people that don't like it. Highlander. I hated Highlander. It's stupid. You know? Uh, Labyrinth is a classic. Your favorite movies as a kid. Okay. I'm hard to please. Well, you know, people that make movies want to make a buck. The rest of us just want a cool movie. You know? Willow is good, but I may not like it. Well, you know, the, the whole thing is, if I expect it being trash, and it's like trash, I'm like, okay. That was, you know, worth watching. You know? Okay, what else do we got on the left on this clown? The hooves? That's about it. And this mother's done. And it's only 9.35. And I feel supercharged. Excellent. Good news. Good news. All right, let's get that. Let's find out where that color that we use for the hooves is. And we've already, we're going to have to do a cleanup here. Good night, Nordic. We're going to have to do a cleanup because I've got way too many things over here. I don't know how some of you guys get anything done, but I, I can't handle the chaos. Um, I can't handle the chaos. I'm going to go grab us. I'm actually going to not have any more of this coffee. Put it in the fridge, and I'll get a Coke, and I'll be right back. Any of you guys going to Historicon? No? Well, there's only two people on there now, so probably not. Still got the base. Labyrinth is a classic. Still got the base. Uh, maybe I'm missing something in there. Okay. What did we have left on this guy? Oh, the hooves. Okay. And that's it. He's done. 
set them off to the side. I'll take a look at them all together and see if I do like the shields on the other two attendants. Nah, maybe one year. I may not go next year. We'll see if we go to Europe. I have very limited vacation days. And I've been there almost 30 fucking years and very limited vacation days. Got to spend two weeks going to Europe, so. We'll see. I don't want to go if you got to wear a mask and can't do this and can't do the other thing. And Honestly, I don't have a huge interest in going to Europe anymore. Um, it made it too easy to communicate with people all over the world with the internet. You know, no jet lag, no time taking time off of work. I mean, it's a pain in the ass to take time off work, leave everything done. Hopefully nobody changes it last minute. I'm going to have a crazy day Monday because that'll be the, the last day and I got to pin people down with what they want and then do it kind of at the last minute, but not too last minute, but last minute enough that they don't change their mind and I got to redo shit. So I really didn't want to have any of this painting to do on Monday night at all. Really didn't want any of that, that, that to do, so. I think we're in good shape. Well, where, where was I, where did I leave it at? Was it here? Ultimately, it doesn't really matter that much. Where is Historicon? Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Amish country. Want to go to G-Fest one year. It's the biggest Godzilla festival here in the States. Never heard of it. What'd you think of the last Godzilla movie? I don't remember it. It fights another creature, right? Oh, it was the King Kong thing. Yeah, ending was kind of predictable. I'm sorry, that shouldn't even be close. I mean, Godzilla is a dinosaur. De definitely better than some ape. You know? One of the movies had one of the movies had pretty cool monsters in it, kaiju, whatever. I want to say it was Pacific Rim. It had like a variety of different ones. Isn't uh, that movie Battleship also a kaiju movie? I didn't see it, but um, Godzilla versus King Kong shouldn't watch it. It shouldn't even be the same size. They turn Godzilla movies into Marvel movies. They're doing that with everything. Pensick War. Never heard of it. Pensick War. Never heard of her. Yeah, I'm pretty much the opinion anything New Disney touches, it turns into a turd. That was the last U.S. Godzilla movie. You didn't see Battleship. I didn't either. It was a make-believe Battleship. It wasn't like the New Jersey or something like that. You know, it wasn't like you think Battleship would be like a take on what was that movie with the where the Nimitz goes back in time, the Final Countdown. It's like the Final Countdown, but with a battleship now instead of an aircraft carrier, right? Like they teleport the freaking Wisconsin into like, you know, the Civil War or something like that. Like, 
<laughs> came, came over, man. <laughs> Game over. Oh, we never finished doing the red. Um, where is the black? Where is the black? I actually think Pennsylvania is really pretty. Even though the road network is insane. You can't get a road that goes straight for more than like 50 yards. It's already turning into something else, picking up with it. It's, it's a little annoying. The worst part about it being up there isn't the drive. It isn't the 15 hour drive. It's that you have to go around DC and, and Washington, both. And you better make sure you don't hit them, either one of them anywhere near rush hour. That's the worst part. The 15 hour drive with Mitch in the car, honestly, feels like going to Miami. It feels like a six hour drive. It's not bad. Well, what I found with long trips is a lot of it is perception. If you know you're going to go on a long trip, you're okay with it. But if you're expecting to go somewhere four hours away and there's a traffic jam and it costs, it takes six hours to get there, oh, you're like pissed and you felt like you took your entire life to get there. So perception is, is a big deal, at least for me. You know, you have this idea of what it's going to be like and if it, if it meets that idea, then you're okay with it. If it's way over the top and the extreme in a different direction, you're like, what the hell happened here? Now, if I got a cell phone signal and I'm not driving, pfft, I'm not in a hurry. I always got stuff to read up on or whatever. I guess they caught cons for everything. Hopefully they can keep all of them going and not shut everything down like they did. Okay, I think I did the bright silver on that. I think this guy's done. We need to do the horse tail, which is gonna be Let's get some black here. Maybe mix a little bit of brown. We got any brown saliva? Yeah, something like this. And then add white to that. Shin Godzilla was good. Hopefully Shin Ultraman comes out here soon. You got a 30 hour travel coming up in August. Battleship was aliens? Oh, F that. I won't watch it. I hate aliens. I guess I'd be okay with them if they were somewhat believable, but. I don't know what it would take for me to believe. Kind of, I mean, I believe in aliens, they have a lot of them there in Arizona. <laughs> ha ha very funny I don't know what it would take for me to think that they're believable it's not something I worry about 
why could they're like what was that that's all over the internet that pictures of the new telescope look at all these millions of stars you guys don't have a freaking clue what's out there you you can't even tell me what kind of shield patterns the romans did the other day it was basically the other day and you're telling me what's what's thousands of light years away horseshit you ain't got a clue I mean, you got a clue, but the odds of you being right are like, I, I choose not to worry about that stuff. Hey, I found my brush I was missing. It's underneath here. <laughs> Ta-da! Hoffman, what part of the country you 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 live in? I bet you're north of here. <laughs> Odds are, unless you unless you live in Brownsville, Texas, or um, south of you know, pretty much. I'm trying to think of a good movie with aliens. Yeah, they just I just don't find them believable. You know. Like aliens that don't have force fields. Texas. You okay. Texas is an interesting place. And I don't mean that any way other than how it sounds. It's it's interesting. We almost lived there. Almost. In 1980, my dad decided to come teach at University of Florida instead of working in Sugarland. And that's why we were here. Um Texas has the distinction, for me, of having the best flag in the, of all the states. And I've said that before. It's got the best flag. It is a mini U.S. flag. You get one stripe of this color, one of this one, a blue field, one star. Bam! Perfect. So whoever designed that, brilliant. Number two flag goes to Tennessee. I call that one the bowling ball of freedom. But I like the little Texas flag. No, but Texas is an interesting place. I say it as an outsider because it's its its, its own thing, you know. Um, you guys have a woody for boots, though. I will tell you that. I am, I am not a cowboy boot person. Um, I would not do well with that. Um... Texas is all right. Might be moving to Taiwan late this year or next. Oh, Texas is a lot safer. I don't think I could live in Taiwan for multiple reasons. Let's just look at... I'm not living anywhere where there's earthquakes. I'm just not going to. It, I've spent too much time on my little thingies to have them, you know, fall off the shelf and get damaged. I tell you what, I've learned something really interesting from this. Because of because of this paper, there is a whole lot of dust. I don't mean a whole lot, but there's little pieces of dust that accumulate on here, probably from the ceiling fan. Well, you know, we all live in in it just to a degree, but I see it on the brush now.
this up a little more. I'm calling this guy done. No. Nope. We're going to put a little bit of, we're going to put a red band at the end of his sleeve and dress this guy up a little bit more. You didn't think about earthquakes and I mean, that place is bad for earthquakes, like really, really bad. Walmart Cowboys. Oh, screw Walmart. Texas gets on my nerves lately. The whole gotta be so Texan fad is going too far. I don't know what that is, but okay. Uh, I don't think about earthquakes and many. He's going to gonna help defend Taiwan from China. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, it's always in the back of my head. The world's just going to hell in a handbasket. Just don't listen to the news. I don't. Well, maybe Taiwan can stand up to China. Who knows? Maybe China's thinking, man, we could get really screwed up by drones. Oh, guy slipped on me and I got to fix something. Talk bad about China. I'm screwing up. I guess I'll just have to screw up a lot. I love playing Chinese armies, but I haven't done worth a shit with them lately. Ever since I put the boycott on them. Nothing against the Chinese people. It's not their fault. They got front row tickets to getting screwed themselves too, so. I love Chinese armies, they're cool. But you know, we're talking like ancient medieval stuff. They're really, really cool. All right, let's take a look at this guy. It's going to look super washed out for you guys. I don't know that I can fix it. Yeah, it doesn't look that washed out. And it was almost like a red glare. Or something weird. Let's see. Maybe I can... No, I'm going to have to zoom out farther to do that. Yeah, that's one of my sayings, front row tickets. I don't know where I got it from. I guess I just picked it up. Let's zoom out a little bit more. And then I got to look at it. God, the colors are so wrong on this, on what you guys are seeing. It's so wrong. That's too dark. Oh well, I'm just gonna have to take pictures up now. Let me look at them.
I'm, I'm going to keep it. I, I like it. Now, let's see. Obviously, we're not going to... We can't do the flag. We can't put the flag on there until they're sealed and based. Oh, man. Freaking too zoomed in. I'm blind as shit. I should have been able to do this freaking 10 years ago. Then I just do everything in 2020. Like a freaking mole trying to look at shit. Man, this is just messed up. Okay, so they definitely have kind of like a pink theme going on. I think it'll be fine. It's the only one that... It's, the only, it's definitely the fancy, fanciest colored one. And I gotta put on the opposite side. The guy on the left looks so much smaller. Uh, it's just perception. I guess maybe he does. They don't in person. Okay. That's the command stand. So I definitely wanted the general to have his own one. And I didn't want to just use a regular cross. We had to use some kind of a Byzantine type cross. So that's what we're going with. I'm sure they'll they'll look extra fine when they're sealed. And I will seal these guys in the morning. I'm not gonna I don't think I'll wait until the command post is done. Alright, let's take all this shit off here that is in the way. That could be minimized, that could be minimized. Who's on here? Four people? All right, cool. All right, let's continue. What else am I going to do? Go to bed at 10? I don't think so. I got a half hour in me for sure. All right. So I opted not to replace the spears on these Varangian Guard. Now, the interesting thing about the Varangian Guard, I didn't know this until I started working on this on this army is, you know, typically, you know, everybody knows that they're Vikings and they're mercenaries and, um, and they're the emperor's guard and stuff like that. But, you know, they apparently not until like 1075, I believe is the date when they started using axes, they basically were spearmen. So that's why I specifically got Varangian guard looking guys that are spears. So these four guys, the, all of these figures are going to be on this little 40 by 40 stand. So what I envision is we're going to have one of these guard guys at each one of the corners. And they'll fit because, hell, I can get eight guys on, on, the, on the other one with the throne. So they're going to be here. It's going to be tight as shit. Okay, so it's going to look really, really cool. It's going to take a little bit of, it's going to be, take a little time to do the basing because of that. So they're going to be on there. The guy with the flag is going to be back here. Um, the emperor is going to be up towards the, the front pointing and I don't know where the hell the guy blowing is going to be. He's going to be somewhere, um, not in the, not towards the emperor's ear though. So he's probably going to be somewhere like, you know, over here or something like that blowing. All right. Capes. He has a cape. The emperor of course has a cape. This guy is just kind of wearing like a, yeah, he's got a cape too. Okay. So the special duty guys have capes. The four Varangian guards do not have capes. All right, we're going to paint the four Varangian guards. Um, we're going to go ahead and change the picture that we have there. Um, let's go ahead and we'll change that in a second. Let's go to my Pinterest and let's put an appropriate picture for some Varangian guards that um, is kind of what my inspiration because the shield is dominantly going to be black and red. They're all going to have the same shield. Yeah, I guess they're all going to have the same shield. Uh, what the hell is this? Uh, 
looks like a picture. You know, you go on Pinterest and recommends other things. I'm like, that looks pretty cool. I said, yeah, but that's like Russians versus like Mongols or something like that. All right. Um, let's go here. Unfortunately, these guys have the boss in the middle of their shield, and some of these guys actually don't have that. The design of the shield does not show a boss in it, which is probably incorrect. Otherwise, they've got no way, to, not way to grab it. So we're gonna just. That's why some of those designs I actually like, but they don't have a boss in the middle of it. Now here's one that does, with a crow. Okay. That one seems okay. This shouldn't take long because it's what? Well, I didn't want to do that. There we go. Uh, I don't like using a little mouse pad here on the computer. It's kind of a last resort. It always seems to want to click on things when I had no intention to do so. And I'm going ever so gently over it. I ought to keep track how many times he says that this next weekend. That's the 75th time you've said ever so slightly. Yeah, like, here's one, but they don't have a freaking boss. So I'm not going to use that. That's Angus McBride's work. So we need to use one that has a design that I like but with a boss on it, because all four of these have a boss. So let's come down here. I saw one. It's a black crow on a red background. Well, I had it here. There it is, at the top. Save image. Save it there. Yep. All right, now we're going to go here. You think Vikings and DBA should be Warband, not Blade? Yeah, I don't think the Vikings should have a DBA sized army. That's one hell of a raid. <laughs> um, let's uh, let's change the properties on this and browse. I thought I'd put the picture here. Damn it, it's not here. Is it here? There he is. All right, let's zoom in out big. So you can see here what design we're looking like with a boss on it. Okay, it's got a black crow on it. So we're gonna do one to make sure we got the crow correctly. Let's see what kind of equipment these guys these guys are wearing. They're all wearing like chain mail or something like that. <laughs> all right, this is what we're going to paint next is these guys right here. I opted not to replace the spears because they're just running too close to the body. I'm going to end up scuffing up some detail.
I think the Vikings were a war band at one point. In maybe DBA 1.0 or something like that. I'm glad I didn't play earlier versions of DBA. It'd just be more shit I'd have to unremember and not be confused by. Medieval armies were way smaller than ancient. Yeah, but Viking raiding stuff's even smaller than that. Missed a lot of spots on these guys. You know what? I'm actually going to call it a night. I'm actually going to call it a night. Because I was actually up at 4. I woke up before my alarm today. So, I think I'm going to set my alarm like I always do. It's already set for 5. If I wake up earlier, I wake up earlier. DBA before 3.0 sounds really annoying. Really, the Saxon armies had no way of defeating them. Well, they did. But the problem is, is uh, the fact that, that blades can't advance, they're just too strong. And they didn't get quick killed by... Spear used to get quick killed by elephants. And Blade didn't. So, you know, you just bring Blade everywhere, you know? Didn't Vikings have armies in England when they settled there? They did. I don't know much about them. That's not really my period. But you know how you find out about it? You build one of their armies and you research it. <laughs> that's, that's how you find out about it. Um... So anyways, we will, uh, we will start on these Varangian guards in the morning. We've got these seven folks to do for the command post. And uh, yeah, and that's it. So anyhow, we'll see you guys soon. Kevin, I think you're not on again because I see two viewers. And I know that Hoffman, uh, Jeremy's on here, and yours on here. So... Does new Saxon figures by um, Forged in Battle look beautiful? I mean, they look really beautiful. So, um, anyhow, we will see you guys later, hopefully tomorrow morning. If not, have a good night, and we'll catch you when, you're, when I'm back on, and we can go from there.